Hey everybody, TWA here. Today I'll be building Haskawa's 148th scale KI44. I knew from the outset that I wanted this one to be a pretty clean build. One of the primary motivators for this project was testing out a new paint for, um, I guess you'd call it a lazy natural metal, something which would be very applicable to a number of hopefully upcoming projects. Construction began in the cockpit, which fit together very well and only required the filling of a few ejection marks. The only modification I made to the kit was to drill out the holes in the pilot seat with my pin vise. This is a small change that takes very little time, but it really adds depth to your cockpit, and with as much glass as this kit has, even if you are building it cockpit closed, this is a worthwhile endeavor. Due to the way this kit attaches the propeller, I broke from my usual practices and actually included the poly cap. This wasn't necessary since I always glued the propeller into place. You could probably get away without the poly cap, but I had, a, I had just had a bad experience with a loose prop on an upcoming project and I didn't want to risk it again here. The wing halves join together marvelously. Take note to take care around the flap guides though, they are extremely fragile, especially on the upper halves. I broke one of mine off and had to re-sculpt it with putty. The wings joined effortlessly, assuming the flap join is correct, which I'm not 100% sure it is. I've seen depictions like this, as well as depictions without the flap slash upper trailing edge mismatch people complaining online about this point of the kit. I personally had seen enough that I didn't feel correction was necessary, so I just left it as is. The engine components and interior were appreciated with a flat black. My largest issue with this kit was the condition my canopy arrived in. It was covered in small scratches and scuffs and created serious distortions. I experimented with the pledge future method. This worked out fairly well, but it could have been even better had I more thoroughly cleaned parts prior to submersion. In The interior is painted with a custom mix whose ratio is left in a notebook about 800 miles away from where I am currently. I will say I started with the Nakajima interior described in the link in my description and went from there until I liked the color. I will have mention of my exact mix in the future as I will be using it in another video.
After the interior colors had dried, I dry brushed with a light gray. I first dry brushed the instrument panel with white. I didn't like how this came out, so off camera I repainted it manually with a brush. After sealing the interior with Tamiya Gloss Clear, I applied a wash with Flory Models Grime. While I waited for that interior wash to set, I dry brushed the engine components with Vallejo Silver. After about two hours, I removed most of the wash using damp cotton swabs. The instrument faces were glassed with crystal clear. I did the seat belts with Tamiya tape. The color is probably wrong, but it came out visually pleasing, which is of course my main interest. It should be noted that this seat is supposed to include a single rear strap, as seen here. Um, for some reason, I just didn't do this. The rudder pedals were attached, unpainted, and then hand painted with Vallejo Silver. The rest of the assembly went together basically seamlessly. Most of the putty needed was due to my own negligence in tearing up pieces when removing the sprue gates. Hasegawa's plastic is also very crisp and firm without feeling fragile or brittle. It is great to work with, very similar to the dark gray plastic some older Academy kits have.
The exhaust collector has a paint call out, but I couldn't see it at all, so I just glued it into place and didn't bother. Unfortunately, I either misplaced or simply didn't record most of my painting process. Thankfully, it was very straightforward without shading, weathering, or custom color mixing. After priming, I painted the entire aircraft with gloss black. I masked off the anti-glare areas, then painted the entire airframe with Tamiya flat aluminum. I really liked how this came out, especially under gloss, and this test frame has given me the confidence to proceed on a few other natural metal projects. It's a bit of a cheap out, but it's fast and looks decent enough for my tastes. The aerial identification and Hinomaru bands were masked off. These were then painted black, then white. The Hinomaru bands were then masked, and the leading edges sprayed with a mixture of something like 30 drops Tamiya yellow with a drop or two of red. Before this, I masked off the control surfaces and painted them IJA gray with a few drops of white. All masks were removed, and the airframe was given a coat of Tamiya gloss clear. After that had set, the decals followed my typical process, microset, decal, dry the decal, solve a set. This was an older boxing of this kit that hadn't been stored wrapped, and the decal sheet was very touchy. The Hinumaros on the lower wings took solvent very poorly, never uncrinkling from the process. I wound up having to sand these down and paint the resulting silver patches with Vallejo Red. For the other Hinumarus, I pillaged decals from a roof kit. As such, the upper wing Hinumarus are slightly oversized and sit centered on the bands instead of slightly inboard as they are supposed to. After about a day, the decals were sealed with Tamiya Gloss Clear, and the airframe was washed with Flurry Models Grime. After it had set, the wash was removed in the direction of airflow with damp paper towels. After another coat of Tamiya Gloss Clear to seal the wash, I made up a mix of about 2 to 1 brown to black, which was itself almost entirely thinner, and a few drops of Tamiya Semi Gloss Clear. This was sprayed very close up at very low pressure to create the exhaust stain. My footage of the attachment of the gear legs was blocked completely by my hands, but this is one of the best parts of the whole kit. The posts are very deep and the fit is very tight. They basically fell right into alignment without any issue or even careful prodding while the glue was setting. The gear doors had very little positive connection, so I had to kind of tack them into place with super glue. On a kit that falls together as much as this one does, this is one of the few areas of poor connection.
Attaching the canopy was largely nondescript. The windscreen was initially fixed with Tamiya thin cement, and after that had set, the telescoping site was attached with crystal clear. The issue arrived when I went to attach the canopy, again with crystal clear. I could not get it to fit in the close position. Any configuration which sealed it against the windscreen also caused the rear of the canopy to elevate significantly above the fuselage with a large visible gap. I realize that midway through, and in this final clip, you can enjoy me struggling to suddenly change my plans and have the canopy posed open. Finally satisfied with the unplanned final position of the canopy, I glued in the gun barrels and painted them a mixture of silver and black and the pitot tube silver. With that, I was out of time. Overall, I really enjoyed this kit. My decals were bad, but the bones were fantastic. It was a simple model that flew together and still provided excellent details, and is a nice, bright addition to my shelf. I also want to mention that I did notice after finishing the build that I completely neglected to include the radio antenna post. I will go back and add that um, next time I'm, I'm at my bench. All right, with all that said, I hope you enjoyed the build, and I will see you guys in October.